This video explains graphing perpendicular and parallel equations. So per perpendicular and parallel lines, so these be linear equations. So we could graph h equals 2 plus 1 third t. If we have our t along here, we say maybe this will be 1, and each square will be 1 for the height for the h. h will be that axis. axis. So we would start at 2 and go up 1 over 3. Okay, and let's connect that with a straight line tool just so it's a little neater. Okay, so it'll be something like that. <clears throat> now a line that is perpendicular to that Let's try to just draw one in and see if we can make that work. Does that look like it's hitting that line at 90 degrees? More or less? Not quite. Let's, let's undo that one. Okay, that one looks a little better. Looks like it's hitting that other line at about 90 degrees, about the same way that a intersection here in town hits about 90 degrees. So, if we were to try to write the equation for that, it looks we might notice something about the slope. From this point here down to here, I go down 3 and over 1. So I think the slope on that thing will be down 3, so I'll have a slope of negative 3. So that's one thing we can know about equations that are perpendicular to each other. They have slopes that compare like these two. Um, so a one-third slope is perpendicular to a slope of negative 3. So if you had, if you wanted to know how to convert that, what you do is you flip it over. So instead of 1 third, it's 3 over 1. And then you take the inverse of that. Well, the negative 3 over 1 is just negative 3. So Any equation that had a slope of negative 3 would cross that line that we already drew in a perpendicular fashion. So let's try on this one. So in this one, we t and d, each square being 1. We start at 3 and go down 1 over 2. Connect that with the straight line tool. All right, now perpendicular to that would be something like that. Does that look like 90 degrees? What's the slope on that one? Well, the slope on that one would be up from here. I'd go up 2 over 1. So we think the slope on that one is a 2. So if I have a slope of negative 1 half, and I flip that over to get 2 over 1, and then take the negative of that, the inverse of that, <clears throat> is that negative 2? No, I'm sorry, we, we had a negative and we flipped it over, and then the inverse of that would be a positive, so negative 1 half, the inverse of that would be negative 2, take the negative of that would be positive, so we think the slope on that one should be 2. And any line that had a slope of 2, we could draw another one real quick. <clears throat> Wouldn't matter where it crosses, as long as it has that slope, it will be perpendicular. So that brings up a point. Well, what about these two lines that have the same slope, a slope of 2? Do they ever cross? No, they're what we call parallel. So if we tried to graph a line that's parallel to another line. Let's try that. Let's
solve this one for y. Let's subtract our 4x. Divide by 2. We have y equals 4 minus 2x. Each square being 1. Starting at 4, going down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. <clears throat> so that line, let's put a, a straight line tool on it just so it looks nice. Well, let's draw another line that kind of matches that. Let's go like from right here, and let's just follow that same pattern. Down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Those two lines will never cross because they're parallel. They have the same slope. They just run alongside each other like train tracks. Well, what would be the equation of that line? Well, he crosses the y-axis at, there's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So y equals 8 minus 2x would be parallel to y equals 4 minus 2x. So the two lines with nothing in between them means parallel. One line with a perpendicular line underneath it is that's the sign for perpendicular. <clears throat> 